y'all, what's up? It's Lauren and welcome back to my channel. So, guess what? I finished a book this week. So guess what it's time for? A book review! Today we're going to be reviewing Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer. Now, this is going to be a spoiler, uh, I'm going to try and make it as spoiler free as I possibly can. If there are spoilers, I will let you know when to mute it and then when to unmute it. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. This was on my list for the longest time, um, and I have a big, huge list. Um, but this was on my list for the longest time, um, to, and it was, like, highlighted in blue, and the ones that are highlighted in blue on my list are, like, the ones that I want to get the most. I actually will, um, give y'all kind of, like, a sneak peek as to how I kind of organize my list, um, later in a later video, but... Yeah, this was the one that I wanted to get so bad, and so we were in Barnes & Noble's one day, and we decided to just, I decided that I wanted it, and I wanted to pick it up. And, you know, it's huge all over uh, BookTube, and it's YA, and I was like, I'd given Rick Riordan a chance before. I'd started the Percy Jackson series, but then I got to Sea of Monsters, actually halfway through the Sea of Monsters, and I just stopped. And I know that's pretty sad, and it's, it's the second book in the series, but, you know, I just decided that it was not, it was not time. Um, so I thought, okay, well, I'll give him a chance with this one, since I wasn't too big of a fan of, of, like, mythology overall. Um, I thought I would give him a chance with Magnus Chase. And boy, am I glad that I did, because I loved this book. It was so good. Um, I've always kind of, ever since Thor came out and Chris Hemsworth and my man, Tom Hiddleston, um, ever since Thor came out, I've kind of been interested in Norse mythology and Game of Thrones is kind of loosely based on Norse mythology, um, because I got a lot of, like, Game of Thrones, like, um, vibes to this and there's also a Game of Thrones reference in here which made my heart so happy and there was a Doctor Who one in here too. I am not only a Game of Thrones fan but I am a Whovian. I love Doctor Who. So it just made me so happy. But anyways, so the Norse mythology part kind of intrigued me a little bit. I was really kind of interested to see how, you know, he was going to work this out and he did it really well. Um, I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I kind of did get the sense a little bit of, like, Percy Jackson vibes as, you know, in the sense that Magnus was a demigod, you know, and, um, there was a quest that he had to go on and everything. But other than that, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the whole story was so much fun. I think his writing, um, I think this is more on an adult level, or not an adult level, but, like, a young adult level. Um, but I enjoyed reading it, um, for the first one. Um, and it was actually pretty action-packed all the way through. It, there was not one point where I was bored or I was, like, wanting to put it down for a long extended periods of time like I am with Game of Thrones. Um, so I think his writing was very, very good in this. I really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that I listened to the booktubers. You know, this is, I should actually add this in a list of books that booktubers made me buy because it was pretty dang good. Um, and I'm really excited to see what the next one holds. Um, I will admit, um, some of the, like, I think some of the characters in there were a little too serious. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Sam. She is really awesome, and I think she's a total bad A, but I think she also kind of takes herself way, way too seriously. And I understand that, you know, life isn't really, sometimes life's not a big joke, but you have to have fun, you know? You have to laugh. You have to make sure that... Um, you know, you're not being too serious and you're not taking yourself too seriously. So, with that being said, I think Sam kind of took herself a little too seriously. Um, whereas, like, Magnus, you know, he was just, um, carefree and, and stuff like that. And we'll get the, into that in a minute. But, um, I just feel like she kind of took herself a little too seriously and I feel like she could have calmed it down a little bit. Um, and... He did a really good job at, at keeping me guessing on whose side, like, is, is what. And I'm still 
a little on the fence about whose side is what, but I think that, um, you know, he did a really good job. It's kind of like, you know, throughout the whole book, I was like, is Loki the good guy? You know, he's, he's wanting to delay Ragnarok, and he's wanting to make sure that this is, you know, stay, it's like, it stays calm. And then there are others who want to bring it on. And then, like, I was like, this is really not confusing, but I was like, he does a good job at kind of keeping us, like, whose side, you know, whose side is, is whose, who wants to keep us where. And I think he did a really good job at that. I mean, kind of, um, did a good job at, like, disguising that. And also, um, the ending was really good, too. I loved the ending. Um, and... It, in this one, you know, obviously it gives us a chance to see what's in, um, the Hammer of Thor, the second book, um, which is really cool. But I, I like how, um, he tied in, you know, the Sword of Summer. Um, he gave personification to the sword, so the sword that you see on the cover, um, which is the Sword of Summer. He named Jack, and Jack actually talks, um, so... I found that kind of interesting. I and I found that like there are, he comes across like goats and other things in here that talk that really shouldn't talk in like our world and I kind of found that interesting. Um I do I now before I get to how I feel about Jack, I'm going to talk about Magnus's humor. I read a book before this um, called My Lady Jane by the Lady Janies, I, by Brody Ashton, Cynthia Hand, and, um, Jody Meadows, and I was like, I had heard that it was supposed to be funny, and witty, and hilarious, and honestly, I think they tried a little too hard with that, um, with that book. It just, it wasn't... It wasn't what I liked. It wasn't, like, my kind of humor. And, because I'm a sarcastic kind of person. I like sarcasm. I like, um, you know, just, just make me laugh. But, like, don't try too hard to make me laugh. It needs to be, like, natural, if you know what I mean. Um, so I think they tried a little too hard in that book to make us laugh. It was a little forced. But in this one, it was so great because he's a teenager. He's 16 years old. And like, I could totally relate with like some of the stuff that was going through his head because I've sat there and like, we're like, I've gotten myself in some sticky situations that I've been like, I've done the sarcasm like he has. And I've, it's just, it was a lot of fun. It was just so funny. I loved the sarcasm. I don't think Riordan tried to force it. I don't think he tried to you know, make it witty, um, he did a great job with Magnus's, um, sarcasm and wit and just his, his just, I loved it. It was so great. He did a good job with it. I loved it. And, and he has a really good sense of, like, how that needs to be and how that needs to, like, kind of be written and, and played out and everything. Um, this humor I liked. This wittiness, this sarcasm, this cute, like, lines. I liked that. Uh, it was something that I enjoyed, and I laughed, and, like, I literally laughed out loud with this book, whereas with the other one, I didn't do so much. I, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that book as well, but this one, um, I just felt that the humor was a little bit easier. It came easier. Um, with all that being said, I do feel like Jack the sword, I do feel like his, his speech and his humor and other, um, aspects was a little forced, um, because I, you already had one sarcastic character, which was Magnus. You didn't really need another one, and so, and that's just my opinion, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be your opinion, but, um, I just feel like his sarcasm and his kind of, like, humor and his, his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess his character was a little, like, forced, and I feel like maybe he could have had someone in there not as sarcastic. I mean, I know, you know, you're supposed to, I get it, you know, the sword is kind of supposed to match him. He's sarcastic, the sword's sarcastic, and it's kind of like they're a good match and everything, but, like, still, it was just a little teeny tiny forced. One of my favorite characters, and he shut up, like, right at the end, was Otis. Who loves Otis?
I love him. He's so self depreciating. And don't get, I, I don't want y'all to think that I'm like all for self um, deprecating. But oh my gosh, he is so hilarious. He's like one, of, he's just, he's so funny. I love Otis. And he's just like, he's kind of like the Eeyore. Um, cause Eeyore is my favorite, uh, Winnie the Pooh character. He's kind of like the Eeyore of Magnus Chase. He's like, yeah, I know. He's like, I'm probably going to be getting, he's probably, he's like, I'm probably going to be eating anyway. So I should just go ahead and tell you. And like, he's so upset. Like, oh my gosh. He was like, he was so funny. And he was one of my favorite characters. I loved, loved Otis. Marvin is the exact opposite. And I like their relationship too, because they're, they really truly show that they're like brothers and they are just, they're hilarious with each other, and I just, I don't know, I loved it, and I, that was one of my favorite, um, parts was when they introduced Otis into the, when he introduced Otis into the story, as, like, Thor's two little, like, chariot pullers and other things, I was like, okay, let's see how this talking goat's gonna go, and then, you know, if you're gonna have a talking goat, you might as well have him be like Otis, because, Otis is just everything. He is everything. He's like, I'm incognito. And uh, he goes, I'm in disguise. He's like, I'm Otis. It was just, oh, I love it. He's so hilarious. Um, I could talk all day about Otis. He's probably one of my favorite characters from this entire book. Um, other than Magnus. I think Magnus did, was a great, he was a good character. I mean, of course, he's our hero. He's our main character. But I, I think you can kind of like, you could also see his struggle, you know, with his mom and, and, you know, losing a parent and everything. And I think Riordan did a really great job at that, too. He did a really good job at um, showing the loss of a parent. Um, I mean, you know, again, in, in this book, I think if I remember, I don't remember Percy Jackson. I think his mom was, I don't know what happened to his mom, but his mom wasn't like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyways, um, so, yes, I don't really know what else to say about this. It's just so great. But his mom, um, I mean, you know, he did lose his mom, and it's a present thing. It is a very present thing from the very beginning of this book, so, um, and it's, you know, a part, it's a big central arc to his book, to this story, um, so it's already, like, mentioned and everything, um, and it's not like it happens in the book. It, it just, yeah. Um, so that was not a spoiler, by the way. But the loss of his, the parent, I think Riordan does such a really great job at writing that. Um, and you know how he feels at two years after his mom had, had died. And I really think he just does a really great job at portraying that. Um, because that's a trope that you don't see a lot in YA. Uh, you kind of do, but like, it's hard to write. Because if you don't experience it yourself, then you really wouldn't know. And so I've read a lot of um, YAs with the tropes of, like, losing a parent. And some of them pulled it off and then some of them didn't. And I would know because, you know, I've, I've actually experienced that. So I think Riordan did a really good job at that. Um, I give him kudos for it. I think he did a phenomenal job writing the um, lost parent trope. But other than that, this was a really great book. Um, I mean, of course, I did have a little bit of problem with, like, you know, some of the characters being too, like, heavy on themselves and being too hard on themselves. Um, but other than that, I thought this was a phenomenal book. I'm so happy I picked it up, and I'm so ready to read the next one. Um, I'm really excited about it. It was definitely something that I'm glad that I picked up. And gave, I'm glad that I gave Riordan a second chance. Um, there are very authors, very few authors that I have given second chances, and I'm very glad that he's one of them. This was a really great book, and I love the cover of it. It was so good. Thank you, BookTube, for recommending it. <laughs> um, I think really the part, the BookTuber that really like got me into wanting to read this was The Dash of Ash, or Ashley from A Dash of Ash. Um, I was like, okay, she's raved about this, so I really just, I, I need to check this book out. I need to check this book out. So I did, and I'm so happy. Um, so yeah, and I finished that. I've moved on to The Elite by Kira Cass. Y'all know how obsessed I am with this series. 
Oh my gosh. I'm obsessed. Pick this up. I'm so excited to continue reading it. So excited. Um, that's it for today. I will be seeing y'all later. Please subscribe down here and hit the notification bell and make sure to check my about page. It has all of my social medias. I actually do have an Instagram. My Instagram is live loves books 17. So please go and follow me on that. And I do have a Goodreads as well. Mine is Lauren. My uh, Goodreads username is Lauren uh, quotation or quote live loves books 17 unquote. Um, and go check out my Goodreads as well so you can be kept up so you can keep up with all of what I'm reading and what I think about the books and everything. But the first place you're going to hear my thoughts about a book is on this channel. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.